few people join us so far. I hope everyone is doing well. We are uh, getting ready to start beginning of the week. We are currently in the middle of the month. Uh, many news announcements around this week. We will just dive in shortly. We will wait for one more minute and then we are ready to get started. Do you guys still holding some trades from last week? Good morning to the people uh, on the live chat on, sorry, on the live chat on the live streaming on YouTube. And those who join us on the Zoom. Okay, so let's start. Uh, as usual, guys, please make sure you subscribe and uh, press a thumbs up on the YouTube channel. Uh, we will appreciate as well uh, when you like on the videos. Uh, it gives us also more understanding about the quality of the, uh, the content. So it's, it's important. Uh, make sure also you follow us on social media. Uh, I always emphasize the Telegram because we put uh, live updates there and you get instant notifications so you can immediately click and act on, uh, on the news. Now, as usual, this is for an education uh, and analysis, market analysis webinar purpose only there is uh, not involved any personal advice the way when i open a trade and when i decide to close trades and how much i'm willing to risk on each trade it's solidly based on my perspective of how i view the market okay uh, there is no obligation for you to follow my trades if you don't want you can just act accordingly based on your uh, best interest okay so what's uh, on for this week? Monday, it's a, today it's a bit, um, it, it doesn't have some major news announcement in terms of uh, possibility of new trends developing the market. Most likely uh, today the, the market is gonna just digest uh, last week's uh, trends. So, what do we have to be focused on this this week? Okay, I'm not saying for just today, but in general, be mindful that from Wednesday onwards, we're gonna have the interest rate decisions from uh, the USA part. We're gonna have, that is gonna affect, of course, the US dollar, whatever it's gonna be the decision. We're gonna have the Swiss National Bank on Thursday, June 16. We don't have any forecast so far and uh, same day early in the afternoon we're going to have the bank of england interest rate decision they are about to keep it the same we didn't have any uh, votes for high everything was uh, we didn't have anyone disagreeing with the votes and on friday we're going to have the bank of japan reporting their interest rate decision okay so as you understand, we will expect to have a significant amount of volatility, some spikes on the intraday uh, moves, they will be expected. So just be cautious with your risk management. That's the most important thing, all right? We don't want to get up in any single trade. We want to be in the market and trade and uh, manage our risk on our best interest. Now, let's go to the MT5 and just to double check, please let's make sure that everybody can see my screen where I use the drawing tool here. Guys, please confirm it's important before we 
proceed to make sure you are uh, the connection is good. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for your response. Yep, we will go to USDN as well today. So let's start from the pound US dollar. And I had an inquiry last time that uh, someone on the live chat on YouTube, they asked me to show you how do I analyze the market and how do I do my uh, top-down approach? Uh, does everybody in this webinar, would you guys like to, I can leave about five to seven minutes at the end and just go through uh, in a very detailed way, how do I, do my top-down analysis, how do I find my entry points and uh, how do I get into the trade? Are you interested to give you a brief introduction about that today? Please type yes or no, so I will know at the end of the webinar uh, if I have to allocate some time for that, okay? So let's go to pound USD. We are on the four hour chart. We can see that the market uh, broke through this formation here. We was holding around the support, big bearish candle here, too much of volume included, broke through a minor retest with this tail, but nothing major here. So the market is just selling off. Uh, now we are about to put a bearish engulfing candle here. For those of you who doesn't know about candlesticks, I will do a webinar, as I said uh, last week, exclusively about the candlesticks. So forgive me for any terminology I use that is not familiar with you. You can Google some stuff until we want to do that webinar. And um, I will go through the candlestick patterns I trade. Okay. So we are on the bearish side so far. We expect the market to sell off around this area here. Uh, again, if it's gonna just push higher, nobody knows that, but normally under normal market conditions, we expect to see a retest of this low before the market is gonna do something else. So if you are intraday trading on the 15, on five minutes, on one hour, uh, any pull, possible pullbacks could be a, a possible uh, bearish continuations here. Let's go to the next one. Euro USD, if you recall, I had a trade uh, from that point last, uh, last week, I entered here. I had a stop loss above the bearish engulfing. So far, I'm still in the trade. I'm waiting for this retest down here. Okay, it's a good five to four. Now I, I think I'm sitting on the four to one uh, reward, which is great. So I will expect to see a push lower. If that doesn't happen, I have my stop here. Uh, and that's it, depends on this bar. Maybe I will act accordingly today. Okay, so still bearish on on the Euro USD. Aussie USD, I had some sell limit orders here if the market could push higher and the market didn't push higher before it sell off. It just sort of from this point uh, downward. So I didn't participate in this, in this trade, but that's okay because I have few positions with a, with a Euro and, and US dollar, sorry. So I will just delete this. It's not a valid pending order. Let's clear a little bit the charts. So we are still bearish here, lower, lower highs, lower lows. Now I expect if you see, if you see here my drawings, I expect a pullback around these trend lines here. And we have this, uh, the most recent level of support because we have this swing in the market and then the market push higher. So we expect to experience some bouncings here. Or if the market is gonna break through, we experience to retest these low levels here. Now, just uh, remember guys that last week we had the, uh, Reserve Bank of Australia uh, increasing their interest rates 
much more than what they uh, the forecast was and the market is not pushing higher the australian dollar is just selling off okay that shows the weakness of uh, of the australian dollar as currency and the weakness of the economy if you like uh let's go to the next one new zealand us dollar i'm still into a trade as i told you from last week whoever was participating on last week's webinar you saw i open a trade here uh, i had my entry here because the market had this triangle formation this descending triangle but for me the most important it was this swing uh lower low and then we had a series of lower highs so on the retest i entered here i had my stop somewhere here and i have my take profit on this area because that's the last uh the most recent level of support based on the current price of course the market can do a little bit of movement and then hopefully it's going to sell off i said hopefully because i'm into the trade of course okay but realistically uh, I expect the market to come down here. So uh, let's see the USD Japanese yen. USD Japanese yen, it's still on the rise. Higher highs. We had this nice breakthrough, a retest. That was a good entry here for uh, swing traders. Okay. Uh, I didn't see it early this morning on the lower time frame, so I didn't participate in that move. However, you have to if you are uh, if you are trading this pair, the USD yen, just make sure you manage your risk because the trend it got a bit uh, steep at this level, and we know that the steep trend uh, it follows by sell off. However, we know that let me just show you something here uh, what's this one we know that this week on wednesday we're going to have the interest rate decision uh, trying to push uh, the the number higher in the usa and uh, exactly uh, paddle japan wants to keep their uh their currency as low as possible as weak as cheap as possible as we know that japan is a major imported country so it's on their benefit to have the japanese yen uh on a an attractive price so uh it's going to be easier for them when they do their transactions okay so if we combine these two forecasts so far we expect to see the us overcoming the japanese yen constantly okay we will see uh, after the market will react when they're going to announce their interest rate decisions so let's go back to the chart so this one here of course, I'm still bullish on this market. However, for my taste, the trend is so steep. I wouldn't be thinking uh, to participate right now, to open new positions right now. Okay. But any pushback here, if it's going to come and if it's going to retest these highs here, I'll definitely look for an entry pattern like a pin bar or a golfing bar to participate uh, in this uh, in this market. All right, USD Canadian dollar. We are experiencing a so now from last Friday a weak Canadian dollar. The market was going with lower lows. The trend lose uh, momentum here, and then this strong bullish. Uh, momentum candle created a, a new and steep uptrend so uh, we see that the market is pushing higher and higher and higher with a retest if the market is going to retest around 50 percent i will definitely look to participate okay so bullish also on the us dollar canadian dollar <clears throat> and actually 
if you see the pattern here, guys, uh, all the markets, they have a trends which the US dollar is, uh, is bullish. Okay, we can see it from the chart. Let's go to pound JPY. If you recall, we said about this level here, I had drawn this line here, the market falls break, and then it's sold off on Friday massively. We had this rejection on Thursday, last Thursday, last Friday, we had this bearish candle, and now we are pushing lower on the lower time frames. Now we are on the daily chart. If you go on the lower time frames for hours, one hours, you can see that the market now it create a lower low formation. Uh, it's a trend here. Someone could participate on the break of this low, a stop above this one here, a bit tight stop. So it can allow you at least to take uh, two to ones until the returns of these levels here. Okay, now if it's going to just sell off like this, we don't know. The only thing we know for sure is that we retested this. We retested these highs here, and we have, uh, as some of the people are trading, we have these double tops here. Okay. Be mindful that here it's a range. Okay, this one here. It's a range. So if you're gonna trade, just make sure you manage your risk accordingly. Euro yen still in an uptrend. Now we are pulling back. If it's the market, it's gonna stay here. We don't know if it's gonna stay there. We don't know. We just keep an eye on that. Uh, if you find the reversal candle here and it applies your trading entry patterns then you can definitely go for that but so far we are just selling off because we are on this correction phase euro against the canadian dollar on the daily chart we are retesting these lows here i'm not going to participate in this move because this bullish candle didn't manage to push the price higher this one here so it means that the buyers maybe they are not as strong as that i don't as strong as as could be uh like when they came here and they managed to push the price higher fast now we have a pullback i'm not gonna just trying to play both sides and see ah uh, maybe this is going to be a double bottom it just doesn't um applies my criteria and I'm just staying on the sidelines for this. But if it's your trading style to buy support, then you have to uh, execute your plan as it's better for you. Now, on the pound Canadian dollar, we see that the market is doing, we are on the four hour chart, the market is retesting this low. Uh, pound across the board, we can see that it's weak in general. So, Yes, we expect to get even weak with the Canadian dollar, why not? But also Canadian dollar against the US dollar, it's relatively weak. So uh, just don't get in caught with many uh, sideways trades, okay? If you are trading Canadian dollar against the British, Great British Pound, Eurozy, we are still on this sideway moves. I'm not taking any sides. If the market it's going to push lower or it's going to push higher, I would just like to see a clear, excuse me, a clear higher, higher, lower lows to make a decision. Uh, let's go, sorry, to the four hour chart. Here is the euro against. The New Zealand, it's a pair that we haven't looked at it before. I just added this morning. So because some people I know they are trading this pair. So uh, we are here for you. That's why I just added so you can understand this one as well. We are making higher highs. We had this rejection here around previous highs. So maybe sellers came in with a good force or we don't know. So 
what we know for sure is that we broke below this trend line. The And to me, for me, it's a big mix picture because the daily chart it doesn't show any uh, sign of clear direction. It's just hovering around this this small range, this narrow range. Pound Australian dollar. Now it's a bit clear this pair. However. Uh, because we didn't retest this lower point, I'm, I wasn't interested to buy from the middle of the range. Now we are pushing a bit lower. Relatively, both Australian dollar, Australian dollar and Great British Pound are weak, so I'm not interested to participate in anything here. Uh, if we go down to the one hour chart, maybe we can see a, a trend develop here, but so far we are covering around here. If you're trading one hour chart, and if this is on your watch list, just please make sure uh, you're gonna wait for a clear break, either to the downside or to the upside, and just be mindful if you're gonna trade this to the upside, if it breaks above a retest, you are good to go. You can target these high points here or if it's going to break down and retest and it's going to give you your entry, just make sure you have a, a big support zone here, which maybe they are sitting many orders, so you don't want to just get into reversals, okay? Uh, don't be very greedy when you are trading within ranges. Pound against the New Zealand, similar scenario, the market came here to these high points, closed lower on Friday. Now it's creating low and low. As we said, pound, it's relatively very, very weak. That's what we noticed earlier this morning. Euro pound, it's a very big uh, mixture. It's just hovering around on the daily. So imagine on the four hour chart, how it's gonna behave. I'm flat on that, so. Let's move on. Aussie New Zealand, uh, a characteristic of this market, this, this type of market, like Australia, New Zealand, uh, Australian, uh, Swiss franc, Australian, Canadian dollar, is that this market, when they create trends, they don't, maybe they can go on and on and on and on with small pullbacks and on and on. They don't give you these clear bounces so you can enter the market like this. You see this one, it went just around like this, and then it pushed higher, it didn't give an entry, then it pushed lower. So both of them are not very, very strong. So just be mindful if you want to trade this pair. And gold, we saw a move. Remember, we said, guys, last week that we have this support here, we have this resistance here. Just be careful when the market approaches a support and a resistance zone. There are uh, order sitting there. And I'm, as far as I understand, many people on this webinar, uh, maybe you don't understand what type of orders and what does it mean when I, what do I mean when I say there are orders sitting here and orders sitting there. So we, So maybe if you want, I can do it. Uh, an informative webinar to dedicate a good 30, 40 minutes and, and, and walk you very, very accurate through this concept. Uh, it's not just support and resistance, it's to understand what's the thing behind uh, support and resistance in terms of the orders. Okay, so I'm happy to do that for you. If you want, just let me know in the chat. Now, back to gold. On this resistance, the buyers, they couldn't manage today instantly to push the price higher during the Asian sessions. Um, a very common phenomenon on, on the current season the trading is the market to push around 50%, to retrace at around 50% from the move on the prior candle and then uh, push higher, okay? so. Maybe the market can come into the middle of this bullish engulfing bar and then it's gonna push higher. Okay, who knows? 
I'm, I'm still seeing as a tight range here, so I wouldn't go and do something with that. Okay, now, as I promised you, let's uh, have a look the way I trade. Okay, sorry, it's just a question here. Uh, hey, I also inquire if Dow Jones uh, could attempt a recovery after the collapse. So Paddle is saying here, hi, I also inquire if Dow Jones, I remember last week, Paddle, you asked about Dow Jones, if it can recover after the collapse. But you said that I rightly said it was looking bad on the higher time frame and said for further weakness. Yes, very spotted. I dropped well over another thousand points. You saved me and I showed you that. That's great. So, Father, uh, again, that's the way I read the market. Thank you so much. That's a good feedback. Okay, I saved you for a for a bad trade, let's say, and the market, you see, it's just selling and selling and selling and selling down. I remember, Pader, we were somewhere here when you made that question last time. We were up, we were somewhere here, and you were expecting a push to this side. But as we said, the market, when it's in a strong trend and buyers, they don't appear instantly, the market, it has a tendency to just instantly sell off okay and that's a, a good to know about in general in the market so guys let's go to the just pound usd uh, uh we'll just clean the charts okay so the way i trade i use the top down analysis all right we don't need to zoom out and get confused i just zoom one or a couple of times maximum and that's it okay so first i go to the one to the weekly chart i zoom out two times and i just trying to find where the market has support and resistance zones so i don't want to to sell on support or to buy on resistance okay i just want to trade in between so uh we see that the market had a support zone here last month or in April. Okay, we see that previously this support respected it here. Uh, and I just draw the relevant support and resistance zones close to the price, the current price now. There are many support and resistance. You can draw one here, you can draw one there, you can draw one uh here you can draw one there you're gonna get confused i don't recommend it i used to do it when i first started it's normal to do it if you want my advice just try to stick to what we say here uh, because it's a kind of shortcut and you don't need to go through all this i'm just putting my 10 years of experience combining in few minutes to just uh, help you to understand the concept so we see that the market here, I see the market that it's in a downtrend, okay? So in a downtrend, I want to sell. Where I want to sell? In, a, in an areas around trend lines or moving average or Fibonacci levels. So the weekly, it shows me that we are in a downtrend. So I'll go to the daily chart and I will try to see the downtrend as well in the daily chart. I don't want to go and put my full risk on an uptrend like this one here. That's a pullback of the weekly chart. And it's not a high probability trade. Sometimes, yes, it pays well, it moves fast, but uh, I prefer to be consistent with my trading. If you recall, we were saying about this downtrend, okay, we had a trend line here. So, sorry, we have this trend line here. I draw my trend line and then I try to see some, uh, some zones of support resistance in this daily chart so i understand exactly to find a bit accurate 
entry point. So the first thing I decided that I want to sell this pair because of the weekly uh, big picture. That's how I call it. Now, at this point here, remember if you forget, if you forget this one here, okay? You guys remember if you were participating on the webinar that I said here we have equal highs. We don't know if the market is going to do higher high. If it's going to do higher high, then uh, we most likely will experience a retest on these levels here before the market maybe it will sell up again. So I'm ready if the market will break higher to wait for a retest and then to buy. But uh, the overall picture is downtrend. Then we came here and I said that we are in within this range and it's a bit uncertain. We don't know what it's going to happen. And surprisingly, last week, we saw this bullish engulfing candle rejecting this lower price. And I said, okay, if it's going to break higher, then I'm definitely going for a new higher high, retest here, and I will buy this. But the market, uh, the, the buyers didn't follow through this buying momentum candle and the sellers, they come and they were pushing lower and lower. Two days in a row, they were pushing lower. So I said to myself, okay, this doesn't look a strong market. I go down to the four hour chart and I was waiting to find uh, a clear pattern to trade. And that was the break of this uh, of this line here. I was expecting a retest somewhere here. The retest didn't come, so I didn't enter the market. But the way I do the analysis is as I described to you, uh, simple and methodically. I go to the weekly chart. I see if I can structure the market. And if there is a recognized pattern on the weekly chart, that's a downtrend. I go on the daily chart and I try to find the trend, lower highs, lower lows. If I see that the market is also in a trend here, then I will find an execution on the four hour chart, which I can put um, a bit of tidy uh, stop loss. So it will give me a good reward to risk ratio. Okay, uh, I will go a bit in more details in another session as well. I just made you a, a brief introduction, all right, because we run out of time, unfortunately. Uh, so whatever happened, okay, to return above 1.5%, the interest rates paddle, we don't know. We are not the Bank of England to know what they're gonna decide. Okay, uh, guys, that's all from me today. Today it looks like a bit of uh, a day that is digesting the last Friday's uh, news announcement, last Friday's moves. So just manage your risks accordingly. We're gonna have more interesting uh, live trading sessions, I think on Wednesday with all these news kicking off. So. Thank you so much for your participant. I hope you, you, you found some value from this uh, morning analysis and looking forward to see you on Wednesday morning. Okay, bye for me now. Thank you so, so much.